Nihama, welcome back ladies and gentlemen, it's Aprilia here and today we're going to be looking into new AI tool from Tencent. This is called Huanyan 3D and as the name suggests, this is basically for creating 3D models and this is the version 2.5 which just got released. And as you can see, the currently everything here is on Chinese. You can in Chrome just basically trans translate it into English. You hit login, use the mail, then paste in your actual email address here and log in and by getting a verification code, you agree. And then it will basically drop you an email with an actual login code, which we are going to be using to log into the actual platform. Okay, the email finally came and here we go, log in. And this is the actual platform that we have over here. And they have a couple of different functionalities here. We have Tusheng 3D, where we are able to basically upload an image, anything that is below 10 megabytes, a minimum resolution of 128 to 128. And then there is Vincent 3D, which is basically for prompting an actual uh, 3D model. So in case you're don't have a reference image, you might actually get better results with the actual image, of course, and maybe closer to what you are going for. There's a couple of different texture styles here. General cartoon, Chinese style, we have blue and white porcelain. That seems to be a very big thing among like AI, AI prompters. Everybody loves porcelain. I get it. And then we have stone carving and cyberpunk. Now I'm going to be showing you a couple of things I was able to prompt and currently there is a limit of 20 prompts per day, which is a lot of things in my opinion, given out that's 20 models per day. Obviously not everything is going to be coming out as intended. So here I have actually a chocobo. So I had this very 2D uh, illustration over here and I think it did pretty solid job. Obviously you're going to be seeing a lot of pixelations on some of the smaller parts like eyes that's kind of you know, where you're going to be seeing a lot of the faults. But in terms of the model, I mean, this is very, very accurate. And there's a couple of different ways to you can view it. So there's the white mold version. So in case you want to retexture it. And there's also automatic bone binding. This may be a bit better probably on... Okay, so basically bone rigging it, which this is important for animations. And the thing is, then there's also albedo, which I think is just means without any uh, natural lighting. And then we have the normal, I don't know what this is used in 3D modeling. I know there's a term, I think this is about shadows and things like that. And here is the one with the texture version. And I have to say, it is very good. I'm actually going to give it a like here. Uh, there we go. And let me show you a couple of the other ones. Then I had just a very, very, I mean, this was our reference image. This is something I used in a recent thumbnail. And it turned out to be pretty damn accurate, given out, like, I should have given it a lot more proper image, something that should have been a render without no background. Obviously, the, the, the whole face area is very messy. But when you are, like, doing a lot of more simple things, and I, I mean, when we look at the actual jacket over here, I think it is understanding so much of the complexity over here. And even the belt is looking pretty, pretty good. And when you go in the wide mold, when we look into the actual face area here, it looks pretty good. Okay, maybe the nose is too big for a female. And there's something weird going on in the eyes and a bit of the forehead. But like, as, as a mold, I mean, this looks pretty good in my opinion. And then we have the albedo and the normal. And you can download these on GLB format, OBJ. OBJ is probably the one that I'm most familiar with. I think these two here are uh, with models. I think OBJs can be opened up with Blender. I mean, this is not my area of expertise as I have a very limited understanding about it. But yeah, you have a couple of different files over here, which are probably the standards that we are seeing in, in modeling space. And then... <clears throat> I had a prompt about Pikachu. So this didn't have an actual reference image. We just had like a basic like, hey, do me a Pikachu. And it gave us four different versions over here. I mean, this looks, this is probably the best of the bunch in terms of accuracy. Let's, let's see the other ones here. Can we actually, how do we rotate this thing? Like, um, okay, here we have another one. This one doesn't, this one has a bit of a weirder tail. Okay, but... It's still like really good. And let's, after this, let's look into what other people have done. And the prompting is pretty fast, I would argue. And as always, you can just use like other tools like ChatGPT to make out the prompts. 
lot more closer what you're going for. Sometimes doing the reference image is probably going to be getting you better results. Here we got three ears. Am I the only one that really believes that this is like the Mandela effect, that this part of the tail was black? Like it had to be black at some point. Or was it maybe perhaps in the anime there was like two Pikachus and the other one had color on the actual on the tail. I, I don't know, but this is something really, really weird of a Mandela effect. So let's kind of briefly uh, look into what other people have done. And there's also some other things here like 3D animation generation that you can do, um, surface reduction, character creation, sketched up to 3D. So there's a lot of different features here that you can do to basically get into your um, process. And even you can pick up a model and texture it, which is crazy to me. So. And all of this, I mean, most of these features, okay, for some reason now we have 20 credits again. Just a minute ago, it was 17. So I don't know what happened there. And then we have even a mini game, maybe because I gave a rating to the thing earlier. But people have been doing very impressive animations over here. Like, look at the detail on this pen over here, uh, ink pen. I mean, I was just about to say that maybe this is not going to be as great for like super highly detailed Unreal Engine hyper fidelity style things, but it actually does a pretty decent job. And even like, let's say, you know, you just want to have the model and then you can just retexture it later. Maybe you're just good at texturing, but you're kind of suffering at 3D models. Well, here you go. Like these type of things can be easily retextured. There's probably other AI tools which are maybe a bit better at even retexturing than this one. But damn, like some of this stuff that we're seeing, let's actually look at that container over here. So this one definitely could be on an FPS game. It's a bit of lower resolution texture. I don't know at what resolution it's actually doing these textures at, but I mean, surely these can be upscaled. You can even AI upscale them. This one also like, okay, from a distance, it looks pretty accurate. It looks pretty accurate. And I think some of these definitely already can be put into maybe this, even this one. This definitely could be in a AAA game. Any modern game, like putting this on Call of Duty and on the background. And it's a small, I, this you couldn't see. So it's really, I think it really excels at a bit more, you know, cartoony graphics. So this one's pretty good. Like, I just like the sketches here. It's just very nice. And especially like if you're doing some type of like pots, oh my, this, can, this one also looks very detailed. Damn, okay. So it's really good tool for um, animators and people, I mean, not just animators, but people who are just really trying to save time on just creating out these random 3D objects and using, now you don't need to resort into just creating stuff with, you know, free assets with everybody using. So your game can look actually a bit different when it has unique assets. So I think, that's a clear benefit. So let's see this one. Okay, this is also pretty good. Yeah, you can see some pixelations. Looks like, a, you know, one of those 90s toys. Yeah, like, wow. Okay. So this is definitely, like, pretty affordable. There's an invite system over here. Um, there doesn't seem to be any more any form of paid plan over here, guys. So I think everything is, I guess, free. So... I, maybe in the future they're going to be improving and adding like a lot more things. But this 2.5D, I just have to say like, it's very high quality. It's able to do these things. And if you have any like texturing expertise in the past, or you just know how to do that with AI, I mean, you can fix a lot of these. Okay, this one looks kind of wonky, but let's see the reference. Okay, yeah, this didn't turn out to be that good. So it can fail definitely on some very, very busy designs. I mean, this is not a very good reference image over here. Not gonna lie. It's just like a lot of weird outlines and the shadows and the certain parts are just a lot more blurry. So given all that context, I mean, it turned out to be okay. But basically, I don't really have much else to say about this one. I mean, if you're really into making games and need 3D models over here for a certain type of project, I mean, definitely give it a shot and tell me what you think about it. And as I said, you can prompt out basically 20 times a day. There are these other features available here which can uh, process these things. I don't know what this mini game creation is, but this sounds kind of crazy. So, I mean, this could be even used for an animation. Is this done on Unity or Unreal Engine? Maybe Unity. But hey, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more videos on the channel. As always, I will be seeing you in the next video when it will be dropping out. Cheers.